this theorem states that if we have a set of vectors that we call S, and the, vector, the vectors we're going to call them x1, x2, and so on, if they form a basis of our n, then every vector in our n can be written as a unique linear combination of these vectors. So every x that belongs to our n can be written in only one way as a linear combination. So for the proof, we have to prove it in both um, directions. So first we're trying to prove specifically that if we um, have a set of vectors, there's only going to be one unique uh, combination of, or one unique set of coefficients that make x a linear combination of those vectors. So there is only one set of coefficients, which we call alpha, or alpha i in general. To write x as a linear combination. So this is what we're trying to prove. So if you think about the definition of a basis, a basis is a special kind of spanning set that has only independent vectors. Specifically, we're going to focus on the fact that it's a spanning set. So um, since we know that S forms a basis, of our n, then it also forms a spanning set. And if we go back to the previous theorem, the theorem on the characterization of a span with linear combinations, we can say that every vector um, in the span can be written as a linear combination. So we already know that every vector x can be written as a linear combination. We just have to prove that this linear combination is unique. So to prove that it's unique, we're going to prove um, why it can't be uh, not unique. So we start off assuming that there are two, at least two linear combinations possible. So we're going to basically pretend that we can write x in two ways, either as alpha 1, x1, plus alpha 2, x2, and so on. So that's with the first set of coefficients. Or we can also write it with another set of coefficients that we call betas. So beta 1, x1, beta 2, x2, and so on. So if we put this all on the same side of the equation, we end up with just what we have in the left minus what we have in the right. So alpha 1 x1 all the way up to alpha m x m minus 
beta 1x1 all the way up to beta mxm, and this now has to equal the zero vector. So um, if we factorize, we end up getting that alpha 1 minus beta 1 times x1 and so on. equals the, the null vector. So basically we just rewrote this as um, a linear combination with uh, the coefficients of alpha 1 minus beta 1, alpha 2, beta 2, minus beta 2, and so on. So we just uh, rewrote it in a different way than usual. Since we know that uh, the vectors in S form a basis specifically, not just a spanning set, we know that the vectors are independent. And using the definition of independence, we can say that the only way that uh, these vectors are in actually independent and satisfy this equation at the same time is for all the coefficients to be zero, which means that alpha one minus beta one has to equal zero and so on. And so then if you isolate either the alpha or the beta, we end up getting that alpha 1 has to equal beta 1, and so on. And so in the end, these coefficients actually have to be exactly the same, which confirms that the linear combination is unique. So now for the second part of this um, theorem, we have to prove that if our vectors in our n can be written as a unique linear combination, then the vectors um, that we use to make up the linear combination must form a basis, which means that they not only form a spanning set, but they also are independent of each other. So specifically, we have to prove that they're independent. So to prove that they're independent, we're going to be using um, the same kind of concept that we just used earlier, where we said that uh, if vectors are independent, that means that the only way that their linear combination is going to give you the zero vector is if all of the coefficients are equal to zero. So specifically what we're trying to prove is that the vectors in S are independent And uh, since we already know that they form a spanning set, then they will also form a basis. So first we can say that since we know that x can be written every x in our n can be written as a unique linear combination. then the span of the vectors must equal Rn, meaning that we can get every vector in Rn from the um, original vectors in the spanning set. And so that already tells us that S is a spanning set. And so again, the difference between a spanning set and a basis is that a basis specifically has only independent vectors. So since we just said that every vector x can be written as a linear combination, that means that the, specifically as a unique linear combination, that means that even the null vector can be written as a unique linear combination. And since we know that you can always get the null vector by multiplying every vector by zero, 
if we know that this also is has a unique linear combination, then that, that must imply that all the alphas are zero. So alpha one, alpha two, and so on, they all have to be zero at the same time. And so if they're all zero at the same time, then that confirms that the vectors are independent. So since they're independent and we said that they form a spanning set, then they must also form a basis.